G'day and welcome back to my hobby room. Now, a um, bit of a sad day. Uh, my father passed away. So um, we were expecting it, so it's no big surprise. And he had been in um, sort of care for some time with dementia and his health was deteriorating. So it was, it was only a matter of time. But what I'd hoped to do before his dementia had set in was actually rebuild the War Spike kit, which was the first plastic model kit that I ever built. He, he bought it for me one Christmas. So this was the thing. And Dad had actually walked on the war spike because it had come to Durban and he'd walked the decks. And then I think later on, he became a sailor in the South African Navy. So there's a big sort of history behind the war spike as far as my family's concerned. I mean, you know, Dad was actually on the ship, actually saw it. So when he got the kit for me and I built it and he helped me put it together, he knew what it was supposed to look like, which was, you know, a lovely connection. So... Coming back after 30 years to the hobby, when I looked around for something to build, this was on special for two shekels, 20 Australian dollars, right? $15 US in my hobby store. So I grabbed it. So that's okay. And I had fun building it. And I'll show you in a sec the build process I did coming back to the hobby. I had to remember everything. I had to learn new techniques. My build was pretty ordinary. I mean, everyone thought it was fantastic. All my friends thought it was great, but I knew I could do better. So I'd always plan to pull this apart and have another go. So I'm going to do a video series which is going to be a tribute to my father. I wasn't really going to do some videos this week because I'm not really in the mood for it, but thinking more and more about it, thinking I really wanted to do this, and now this is a good time that I do it in his memory. So that will be it. There'll probably be only a video a week, and I'll do just basically most of it privately in my own time. It'll be my thing for me, a cathartic sort of thing that I will do in memory of my father. It wasn't the best of dads. I mean, let, let's just get this straight. So a lot of times I hated him. He was a bad man a lot of the times. And, you know, he did some terrible things in his life. But then I'm no saint either. And most people are a mixture of devil and angel. So we'll leave it there and we'll try not to speak ill of the dead. But I remember dad introduced me to hobby right, to scale modelling. First, it was balsa. It was aircraft, balsa aircraft. That's what he built as a kit. So he got me into that at a very early age, right, very early age. I was building Spitfires and everything out of balsa wood. And then I got into the ones where you put the motors in and they fly around. And it wasn't until Airfix came to my news agent in Perth, in West Australia, where I lived. And I went in there and there's this Airfix stand of the kits and the bags. And I bought the Spitfire. Well, actually, I had to put it on a lay-by because it was a whole dollar. And I only had 20 cents a week pocket money. So, you know, four or five weeks later after my lay-by, you know, you put the money in each week, come back, you know, a lay-away, I think the Americans call it. And then I had the Spitfire kit and built it in a day, loved it, hooked on scale modelling, you know, styrene kits ever since. So um, this will be a video about what I intend to do with this war spot. And then there'll be follow-up videos showing you my progress each week. I, I hope you'll enjoy that. And I hope you realise... The meaning this has for me. All right, roll the music. So eight years ago, I purchased this kit, Airfix 1600 Warspite, and started to block in the basic colours using rattle cans, stampy rattle cans. And you know, it's it's a nice enough kit. It's old. It's a little bit of flash, a little bit of clean up, but it was a hell of a lot of nostalgia in it for me. And, you know, I had joy just coming back to modelling, doing something I was familiar with. So started to do a bit of detail painting, and the only paints I could find were the Tamiya paints, because I, I wasn't using Humbrol enamels anymore. So I was painting inside, sort of a rental property I was at. And I sort of experimented with a little bit of um, <laughs> washing, uh, trying to get effect. And, uh, yeah, it, it took me a few goes to get it just right. I'd remembered how we used to do it with boot polish. We'd rub boot polish on the model and then wait till it dried and then rub most of it off. And I sort of got a look and there you go. She's, she's coming together quite well. It looks like a war spike, but it is a little bit too over weathered. So I ended up cleaning it up and respraying and sort of gently weathering it this time. And then I got some metal barrels because I actually broke the plastic ones off and I watched all these YouTube clips, bloody YouTube, and I put some metal barrels um, on it and that wasn't too bad. And that's pretty well as far as I had got at that point. I put on the, the boats and then the, the airplanes, but that was it. I'd considered that kit 
pretty well done and there she was I was happy with that that was sort of my first attempt back at the hobby and I wanted to move on so I got the 1350 scale grass spray and that was my next project anyhow flash forward eight years I got the kit out decided I could do better I try and repair it I try and fix it up so I started cleaning off all the horrible paint that I'll uh, I'll repaint it all separated all the bits and then I started rebuilding and cleaning out these tiny little uh, sort of sections that go underneath the deck there at the uh, midships and fixing up all the guns and scratch building their housings and that was sort of fun that's going to look a lot better all the boats all the airplanes cleaned up well amazingly that Tamiya paint comes off with a bit of Windex soaked in water so that's as far as I got with the refurbishing of the war spot until today do not adjust your set no you are not seeing double well, actually you are seeing double but that's how it's supposed to be i've got two of these war spot kits this is the one that i bought back in 2014 at the beginning of march and it was the first kit that i built coming back to the hobby after you know quite a few decades over over 30 years of not building model kits so um that's that one and in there there is the broken because I tried to start repairing it but it's getting there there is um, the hull so I've done some work because I was going to upgrade it because my first attempt at building the war spot after all those years it was okay it's probably better than what I did as a kid back in the middle of the 60s but it's nothing like the kits that I build now and especially with the skills that I've learned over the last decade getting back to modeling so I have brass pedestal. I have 1,600. One yeah, bloody hard to find. 1,600 scale deck railings. They are not easy to find. I have the wood deck for this scale horse white. 1,600 scale. Right, I've got that. I have some barrels. I have lots of little things in here. I've got more barrels. Barrels, barrels. I think they actually are. Yep, one six hundred scale, fifteen inch barrels. They're for the hood, but they're exactly the same ones as the wasp white. So that's good. I have all the things that I normally would add to a warship build, and I've got them for this kit. But things kind of got a bit ruined with you know, um, I didn't do that good a job of building, and I caked the paint on because I was painting Tamiya paint <laughs> by brush, and you know it was um, it was quite horrible. What's this? Um, oh, that's a barrel person. There you go. So. Parts are a bit horrible. Then, lo and behold, up on one of the sale groups came the War Spike kit, said there were some things missing, but most of it was there. It was in good nick, and I got it for a shekel. In fact, I only paid two shekels for this when I bought it 10 years ago, right? Or eight years ago, from, um, from the Toy World. <laughs> so I've never spent much on this kit except for aftermarket. This probably cost about nearly five times more. So look, this is uh, in pretty good neck. The instructions are still white. They haven't faded. Okay, middle it's Rebox. The um, the biggest problem with with this one is he's waterlined it. All right, so with the hull, that was what had happened. The guy had waterlined it. Now that's an option. I could do a waterlined version. So, you know, if I was to use the hull out of this, I'd have to go waterline. Number of parts as usual had come loose. That's typical airfix. All right, but they're all there. They're all there, and the beautiful part about this is I now have a brand new deck because the deck on here has had so much boot polish and stuff and everything that it's a bit buggered. So um, a nice new deck could be a good start, especially as I want to use my wood veneer deck now. So I can just give that a light primer, Steiner S, put on my wood veneer, and it's going to look very nice, whereas this one has been through the mill. So all I need to do really is... Use the hull that I've already kind of cleaned up and I've already worked on the little casements here and I've got those a lot better than they were. I've actually scratch made where the... Um, should I get this off? See, I've done some scratch work already. I was doing that around Christmas so that um, I would just drill some holes in there. I think I might even pre-drill them and then I can put in my metal barrels and they would look really nice because I didn't like the way Airfix does it is there's um, a bottom part and a top part and it joins and it's supposed to emulate the seam lines there's, you know there are actual lines on the side of the um, these these um, 
turrets here, right? These little casement turrets, but they should be very fine. Whereas the airfix thing has huge, big sort of gaps. It looks bloody awful. So I went to the trouble of scratch building those. So that's where I'm at. This all needs repainting because I used metallic red. It was the only color I could find in a rattle can back then. And the hull gray, well, who knows? I'll go with the correct colors. I'm going to go with the camo scheme. Similar to this one, but I think there's a camo scheme where there's a couple of different colors with a light blue. I'm going to find that one. Wood deck, metal barrels, some P railing, and I'll probably replace a few of the, um, you know, the flag masts and a few other things with brass rod. That should make for a very, very nice tribute build. So that's my plan for this video series, and we'll see how long it takes to build. It took me two months to build the war spot the first time around, but I started out with only a nail cutting kit. You know, I was basically cutting things off the sprue with the, you know, the little trimmers, <laughs> filing the parts clean with the nail vial, and this is all I had, right? And I just sort of, I had none of my tools from my youth. So I slowly over two months bought a sort of brace of tools until I sort of by the end of the, the build I had paint, I had brushes, I had proper knives and proper files and all the rest of it. So um, this time hopefully I've got better tools, <laughs> well I know I have, and um, I'll also be going that a little bit further. But I'm a lot faster and a lot more experienced, so we'll see. I'd, I'd like to think it doesn't take me two months. I think that really, because I've already done a lot of work previously, I know the kit will just go together and I'm only doing a small amount of aftermarket. That basically a lot of work will be painting, as you know I abhor, but I'll do it. So yeah, maybe we can do it in a month. If I just do this every week for the next five weeks, which is the time that it took me to build that Spitfire, buy that Spitfire, remember? Five weeks of lay-by, five weeks of building a tribute to my late father. All right. Well, I hope you sort of enjoy where I'm going to go with this. And you can see that this is going to be, at least for me, it's sort of fun. Yeah. It's something I feel I want to do. Understand? Yeah. All right. Look, like, subscribe, comment, all those sort of things. I don't need to belabor that point. And um, look, I'll uh, look forward to seeing you each week with my updates on this War Spite tribute build. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Hedini.